Hi there. Now for this question then, we were given this curve y equals f of x and it had this equation f of x equals 4 sine 2x all divided by e to the power root 2x minus 1. It is just root 2, not root 2 of x, so it's root 2 times the x and then minus 1. And we had to show that the x-coordinates of the maximum point P and the max minimum point Q were satisfied by this equation tan 2x equals root 2. Now I'm going to take you slowly through this solution but some of you might want to fast forward to the end and you'll see all the working. Okay. Now in order to find out max and min points what we need to do is realize that the gradient at the point P and Q is zero. So we need to differentiate this equation with respect to X and make it equal to zero. And then if we solve that equation, hopefully it will take us down to tan 2X equals root two. Now, when it comes to differentiating this, we've got two functions of x being divided by one another. So we've got to use the quotient rule. And I'm assuming that you're familiar with the quotient rule. If not, do go back and check out my video tutorials on that. Okay, now I'm gonna remove this graph here because it's just gonna be in the way. So just take that out. So when it comes to differentiating this with respect to x, we'll put that as f dash x or f prime x as some of you might call it. Okay, the first differential of f of x with respect to x. So when it comes to using the quotient rule then, we take the denominator, in this case e to the power of root 2, multiplied with the x minus 1. So we take the bottom of the fraction, I'll put that in brackets, and we multiply it by the differential of the top. So we need to differentiate 4 sine 2x with respect to x. And for this, you should know the result straight off. It's going to be 8 cosine 2x, but we do it by the chain rule. And the chain rule, remember, is basically dy dx equals dy by dt times dt dx. It's as if these dt's cancel, leaving you with dy by dx. So for 4 sine 2x, if we were to let y equal 4 sine 2x and t equal the 2x here, you'd get y equaling 4 sine t. And so we need to do dy by dt first of all. And if you differentiate 4 sine t with respect to t, you're going to get 4 cosine t. And we fill the t in with the value 2x. So we end up with dy dt equaling 4 cos 2x. And next we need to do dt by dx. And if you differentiate t with respect to x, we've got t equaling 2x here. Differentiate it with respect to x, you just get 2. So dy by dx is to multiply those two results together. 4 cos t, or I should say 4 cos 2x, with the 2. So you're going to get 8 cosine 2x. So just pop that in there then as 8 times cosine of 2x. As I say, you should be able to differentiate that really straight off and get this result here. But otherwise, the slow approach then is to break it down like this using the chain rule. So back to the quotient rule, remember it's the bottom of the fraction times the differential of the top, which we've just done, and then it's minus, and we do it the other way around. We take the top of the fraction, which is 4 sine 2x, and we now multiply it by the differential of the bottom of the fraction, the denominator. And again, to differentiate this, we would use the chain rule. I would let t equal the root 2x minus 1. So it would have y equals essentially e to the power t here. And if you differentiate e to the power t, you get e to the power t. So that would be e to the power t, t being the root of 2 times the x minus 1. 
and then we multiply it by the differential of what we called t, the differential of root 2x minus 1 with respect to x would just be root 2. So I put that in there as root 2. So I'm showing you how I would differentiate that using the chain rule just off the top of my head. But I'll take you through that one more time. Chain rule then, dy dx equals dy dt dt dx. I let y equal e to the root 2x minus 1 and t is the root 2x minus 1. So I've got y equals e to the power t. I differentiate y with respect to t. So I differentiate e to the t with respect to t and I get e to the t. And replacing t with the root 2x minus 1 as we had here, you get dy dt equals e to the power root 2x minus 1. Then we need to do dt dx, differentiate t with respect to x up here, and you just get root 2. So all I'm doing is multiplying these two results together to give me essentially the differential of e to the power root 2x minus 1. And there it is up there. Okay, so we're still with the quotient rule. We now put all of this result over the denominator squared. So as I say, do check the quotient rule out if you're unfamiliar with it. Okay, I've got two tutorials on that. So we take the denominator e to the power root 2x minus 1 and we square it. Okay. Now I'm going to clean this up. What I notice is that I've got e to the power root 2x minus 1 as a common factor on the top and so I can divide it out with one of these results here. Okay, I've got that squared. So I can just divide through by e to the power root 2x minus 1 that will cancel, that will cancel, and I can take it out here, okay, as it's a factor of that. Now we can just tidy this up, and we've got 8 cosine of 2x, and then for this one we've got minus 4 times that root 2, so that'll be minus 4 root 2, and then the sine of 2x, and all of this is over e to the power root 2 x minus 1. Okay, now this gives us the gradient at any point on the curve. We're looking for the maximum and minimum points and we know that that's when the gradient which is given by f dash x or f prime x equals 0. So that's going to therefore mean that if we put this equal to 0 just the top of the fraction would equal 0. Okay, 0 divided by this denominator here would give us 0. So that means that 8 cosine of 2x minus 4 root 2 sine 2x must equal 0. And it's just a question of rearranging this. Remember that the tan of 2x is the same as sine 2x over cosine 2x. So that's giving me a clue to what I have to do here. I'm just going to divide through both sides by 4. I can see that if I cancel that out, that goes once, that goes twice. Okay. And then if I add root 2 sine 2x to both sides, I end up with 2 cosine of 2x equals root 2 sine 2x and now if I divide both sides by root 2 and cosine 2x I end up with 2 divided by root 2 equals sine 2x over cosine 2x and from this we should see that sine 2x over cosine 2x then is tan of 2x and root 2 will go into 2 root 2 times. So it follows 
that we get this result here. Okay?